Although the grocers aren't the kind of investment that most people think about when looking for ideas, on a defensive level, people will always need to eat, and the big grocers will collectively make more money as long as the Canadian population keeps growing. Especially when immigration alone brings over 300,000 new permanent residents into Canada every year, that's 1% of the population, we can expect a lot more grocery shoppers over time. Interestingly, most people would think that there's not much growth potential in grocers, since it's hard to notice any big changes with your local store. But even with your worst performing grocer, it was still possible to more than double your investment over the past decade. For a quick answer, the best Canadian grocer of this decade was Metro. And if you include the American grocers that are in Canada, then it was Costco. But stay tuned if you want to know how much you would have made with each, the differences between them, and what they've been doing all these years. Loblaws is Canada's largest grocer, and they're bigger than the size of Metro and Empire combined. They own Shoppers, TNT, No Frills, Real Canadian Superstores, Value Mart, Provigo, and Fortino's Banners, just to name a few. In their network, they own over 969 stores, half of which are discount banners, and 1,300 Shoppers Drug Mart locations. The company generates roughly $49 billion in sales every year and has 190,000 employees. That works out to $258,000 in sales per employee and 21 million sales per store. George Wesson owns more than 50% of the company. Loblaw's private labels include President's Choice, No Name, and Life Brand. Under the PC Optimum Loyalty Program, there are more than 3 million people using their MasterCard. That's one third of the adult population in Canada. In 2009, they acquired TNT supermarkets for $225 million. In 2011, they opened the 85,000 square foot Loblaws at Maple Leaf Square Gardens. In 2012, they spun off all its real estate into Choice Properties REIT, which IPO'd the year after. In 2014, they acquired Shoppers Drug Mart for $12.4 billion. At the time, Loblaws was nearly identical in size, so it was a merger of equals. In 2018, the official PC Optimum Loyalty Program launched in Loblaws brands and Shoppers Drug Mart. Also in 2018, Loblaw sold its ownership and choice properties to George Weston, which resulted in instant tax benefits and dividend increases. Also in 2018 was the year that George Weston owned more than 50% of Loblaws. This resulted from Loblaws continually buying back its own shares. A $10,000 investment in the stock over the last decade with dividends reinvested would have generated roughly $3,100 in dividends and an end portfolio value of $27,400. That's a return on investment of 174% and an annualized growth of 10.5%. Metro is Canada's Quebec-based grocer. They own the Metro, Food Basics, Super C, Premier Moisson, Marche, Adonis, Brunette, and John Coutu banners. In terms of stores, they own 950 locations, 25% are discount banners, and 650 drug stores. They generate roughly $17 billion in sales and have 90,000 employees. That's one third of what Loblaw makes in sales, and it works out to $189,000 in sales per employee and $11 million per store. Metro's private labels include selections and irresistibles. In terms of loyalty, programs, Metro uses Metro and Moi in Quebec and Air Miles everywhere else. In 2010, they launched a Metro and Moi loyalty program. In 2012, they acquired a stake in Marche Adonis for $154 million. In 2013, they began the conversion of some of its Metro locations into the discount banner Food Basics. In 2014, they acquired Premier Moisson, a leading bakery in Quebec. In 2016, they launched their online grocery service. In 2018, they acquired Jean Coutu for $4.5 billion. For those that don't know, Jean Coutu is pretty much the shopper's drug mart of Quebec. And simultaneously, they also sold their $1.5 billion stake in Alimentation Couchetard. At the time of acquisition, Jean Coutu was almost 40% the size of Metro. A $10,000 investment in Metro over the last decade with dividends reinvested would have generated $3,700 in dividends and an end portfolio value of almost $47,500. That's a return on investment of 375% and an annualized growth of 16.7%. That's what food can do. Empire owns Sobeys, Freshco, Safeway, IGA, Foodland, Thrifty Foods, Lawton Drug Stores, and Farm Boy. They have a total of 1,500 store locations, of which only 6% are discount format. They generated $26 billion in sales, which is around half of what Loblaw generates. 
and they have 123,000 employees. That works out to 211,000 sales per employee and 17 million per store. They have a 41.5% ownership of Crombie Re, which owns grocery and drugstore anchored shopping centers and mixed use properties in Canada. As of today, Crombie Re represents 10% of Empire's value on the stock market. Lastly, they have a major ownership in Genstar, which is a property developer with operations in North America. In 2011, they sold their stake in Wayjax, which provides equipment to the construction, forestry, mining, and energy industries. In 2012, they acquired 236 retail gas locations in Quebec and Atlantic Canada for $215 million. In 2013, they sold $900 million worth of land to Crombie Reed. Also in 2013, they sold their Empire Theatres to Cineplex and Landmark Theatres for $248 million in total. Also in 2013, they acquired all the Safeway Canada stores for $5.8 billion. At the time, Empire was almost equal in size. In 2018, they acquired Farmboy for $800 million. In 2020, they launched a Voila e-commerce grocery service, which provides automated customer fulfillment and delivery. A $10,000 investment in Empire over the last decade with dividends reinvested would have generated roughly $2,400 in dividends and an end portfolio value of $20,600. That's an ROI of 106% and an annualized growth of 7.4%. So for Walmart and Costco, they're both global companies that operate in Canada and their stock is in US dollars. So I'll just talk about what they've been doing in Canada. Walmart. Save money, live better. Walmart Canada was established in 1994 from the acquisition of store leases held by Wolco, who was struggling to survive at the time. Walmart retained 16,000 of their employees, many who were the reason why Walmart expanded very successfully in Canada. Walmart Canada only represents 3.5% of Walmart's total existing stores around the world. The landlord for Walmart Canada locations are usually Smart Centers, RioCan, or First Capital. There are 408 Walmart stores in Canada, 15% which are discount format. Walmart Canada generates roughly $24 billion in sales. That's roughly half of what Loblaw generates in sales. And Walmart has over 91,000 employees, which is similar to Metro. That works out to 264,000 sales per employee and 59 million per store. In 2011, they acquired the lease of 39 Zeller stores from Target in Canada. In 2015, upon Target leaving Canada for good, Walmart Canada acquired 13 of its store locations and its Cornwall distribution center. In 2018, it began offering same-day delivery through its partnership with Instacart. Also in 2018, Walmart Canada sold its banking operations called Walmart Canada Bank to a private investment firm. Since Walmart stock is based in US dollar, including conversion of currency and the fees, a $10,000 investment over the last decade with dividends reinvested would have generated roughly $5,000 in dividends and an end portfolio value of $37,000. That's a return on investment of 269% and an annualized growth of 14%. The first Costco Canada location was in British Columbia back in 1985. Costco Canada has over 10 million members across the country. That's one third of the Canadian adult population. During the first eight years of operations in Canada, its members needed to be business owners or work for the government to be eligible for membership. This requirement was removed in 1993. Its private label is a Kirkland signature brand. Costco has 100 locations in Canada, which is 13% of their stores around the world. In Canada, they generate $25 billion in sales, which is roughly half of what Loblaws generates, and they have over 39,000 employees, which is only 20% of what Loblaw hires. This works out to 641,000 sales per employee and 250 million per store. Costco Canada has roughly 4,000 products compared to the roughly 30,000 found at other supermarkets. Costco has a distinct rule that no item it sells can be priced over 14% above its cost. In 2014, Costco Canada ended their 15-year relationship with American Express for MasterCard. Also in 2014, Capital One became the exclusive credit card for Costco Canada. In 2017, they opened the first Costco Business Centre in Canada, which offers printing and business-related products and services. In 2018, Costco opens their 100th location in Canada. Also in 2018, they launched their online grocery shopping and delivery service. Since Costco stock is in US dollar, including conversion of currency and fees, a $10,000 investment over the last decade with dividends reinvested would have generated $9,000 in dividends and an end portfolio value of $86,500. That's a return on investment of 765% and an annualized growth of 24.1%. So here's a summary of the five grocer investments this decade. The best investment of the Canadian grocers was Metro, and it was Costco if you include the American grocers. 
The worst of the five was Empire. If you had an equal investment in all three Canadian grocers, you would have generated roughly $3,100 in dividends and an end portfolio value of $31,800. That's an ROI of 218% and an annualized growth of 12.3%. If you had an equal investment in all five grocers operating in Canada, you would have generated roughly $4,700 in dividends and an end investment value of $43,800. That's an ROI of 338% and an annualized growth of 15.9%. When you look at how the TSX Composite has done over the last decade with dividends reinvested, investing in any of the grocers would have made you much more money. If you had an equal investment in multiple grocers, either the three Canadian or all five on the list, you would have doubled to triple your end investment value over the last decade compared to just broadly investing in Canada through the TSX Composite. Here's a summary of the operational data I talked about showing how much sales, employees, and stores each grocer has in Canada. I also show how much sales they generate for each employee and store they have. You'll notice that in Canada, Canada, Loblaws has double the sales of any big grocer and they have the most employees in store locations. Even on a per employee and store basis, they do pretty well and are the best among the three Canadian grocers. Metro has the lowest sales and even on a per employee and store basis, but the stock has performed really well and it's the best among the three Canadian grocers. The US grocers have much larger store formats, so the sales are normally much higher, but given that they don't hire as many people and don't have that many locations, they still have much more sales per employee and per store. Costco's sales per store is almost 10 times higher than any other competitor, so it might be frightening for other grocers whenever they announce a new store opening because it's like opening 10 to 20 of their locations all at once. If you combine all the sales of the 5 grocers, the Canadian grocers represented 68% of all sales. If you combine all their employees, the Canadian grocers represented 74% of all employees hired. And if you combine all their stores, despite the fact that not every store is the same size, the Canadian grocers accounted for 91% of all store locations. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this this video or learn something new, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments below which grocery store you normally shop at.